Okay, so one of the features in Excel that I really like are Excel tables. And many people, even those who are pretty advanced in spreadsheets, have no idea what tables are and how they actually work. And very often I'll see them used accidentally in a lot of spreadsheets without people realizing how it affects their spreadsheet. So let's first of all talk about what problems tables are trying to solve. So let's start by creating a column. I'm going to call this amount. And I'll go below this and basically just type a few numbers. Just three numbers here. So let's say over here we do some sort of summary. And in this summary, I'm going to do a few different summaries. I'll do the total. So for that, I'll use the sum function and add these numbers. Then let's do the average. And again, I'll use the average function. Let's get the largest and smallest number. It doesn't really matter. So the main point I'm trying to do here, basically we have some formulas using this range. So I have my formulas, I have my total, the average, etc., based off of these numbers, right? So at some point we decide to add a number to this range. So let's say we would like to add another 25. So at this point, we're expecting our total to go to 125. So if I do that right here below, that doesn't add up to my total. And if I go check what happened to my formula, well, that's not included in the range. And that's the same problem for every single one of these. So now I would have to go back and basically fix all of these formulas. So I'm gonna undo that 25 for a second, get back to what I was. So one way to get around this is to add the new number in the middle of the range, right? So you could add a new cell here and say, shift the cells down like this. And now if I do 25 over here, you'll see how it adjusts because now because that's in the middle of the range, it's gonna work. But that's not something you want to do generally. So how can we address this? This is where we get to tables. So what I can do, this is my formula right now. I can just go ahead and select this, go under insert, and I'll show you there are other ways to make tables, but this is one. I'm gonna go under insert menu on top here and go under table. And this thing is gonna pop up. It's asking, does your table have headers? Headers refers to these names on top. I do, so I'm gonna press okay. Now, after I convert this to a table, I'm gonna go ahead and just add another number to this list. So 35, now it should add up to 135, and you can see it does. So as soon as I converted that to a table, it realized that this range needs to expand automatically and see how it automatically adjusted all my formulas to actually include that number. So if I go and add another number to this, you'll see how my numbers will update again because the new row I'm adding is automatically a part of this table. Now you may or may not like design of this. So if you don't like it, you can change this. So I can go here, see there's this table design. Sometimes in older versions it will say design, but it's really the same thing. You click here, see these are different designs available for that table you can choose from. But if you hate all of these, you just want to go to the standard design, you can just open this and go to this top left light to remove all of that formatting out of here. You can also uncheck this filter button to remove this filter. So we're technically now back to the way it usually looks, but I can go here and add another 15 and you'll see all of these update. Now, one thing that's not going to change is this little icon that's gonna show up in this corner. See, there's this blue icon and sometimes it's a different color, but it doesn't matter. So I wanna show you what that's for. So that basically indicates the end of the table. So what will happen sometimes if you skip a row and add another 20? See, my numbers don't update. When you add rows after you skip a row, it's no longer a part of that table. So any new row you add directly below that, it's gonna be a part of that table automatically. And any new column you add directly next to it, it's gonna be a part of that table automatically. 
But if you skip a column or a row, that's not going to happen. So what you can do, you can adjust this. You can go grab this little thing that shows up here and just drag it to show where your table actually ends. And as soon as I do that, my formulas are updated now, all of them, just like that. And it just works. Now, like I said, if I add a new column on the right, see it automatically adjusted this. It shows this is the end of my table. Now, this is a part of this table too. Now, tables have names. So if you go back to that table design or design, you'll see on the left here, it says table name. So by default, Excel will assign names like table one, table two, table three, but you don't have to keep these names and it's best practice to always change to something that makes sense. So for example, I'm gonna go here and rename this table to data. You can call it anything you want. As a matter of fact, just not to confuse anybody, I'm just gonna call this table coffee. I'm gonna hit enter. Now, once you create a table, you can refer to that table using table syntax. So what that means, if I'm creating a new formula and I do equal sum, I can still do something like A2 colon A9, and it's gonna work but I can also refer to that table using the name of the table. So the table was called coffee. So as I type, see it pops up. Now if I complete this, you'll see coffee refers to this entire range in both columns, including the net column. So if I close this down right now, hit enter, it's still 195 because there's nothing in this column net. But let's just add another 12 to this so you can see what happens. Now you can see how that adds up to this total because that refers to the entire table. Now what you can do, you can go after the name of the table and open a square bracket, and then you have access to different parts of the table, and you can see autocomplete is helping you here. So let's talk about some of these parts. Let's start with the basic ones. So if you look here, there is amount and there is net. So if I go amount, that's basically this column name from here. So the column name goes in square brackets right now. So right now, if I hit enter, my total should be the total for this column. If I go change this from amount to net, tab here to autocomplete, close this. Now we're adding up the net column. Now, in addition to those, we have a few different options here. I'm gonna skip this first one for now. I'll get back to it in a second. There is this option all, close it. You'll see how that refers to this entire range, including headers on top. See, it's highlighting A1 and B1 as well. When you just say coffee, which is just a table, it's basically just a range without headers included. If you go to all, basically now we got the whole thing. Now you can also, for example, point to headers, basically just refers to this range of column names, headers on top. We also have totals, which we are not gonna be able to do, and I'm gonna get back to that in a second. And then we also have the data. So data will refer to that table data, see the data in the middle, not including the headers, which is essentially the same thing as using this. It's just the data of the table. So now let's click on this table, back to table design, and let's add this checkbox for total row. And you can either have some text here or you can go here and choose some sort of function. Let me zoom out a little bit for a second. So here I can open this, see I have different functions and I can say sum, and now it's gonna show me the sum of this column. And then this one I can say, open this, and also choose a function. So if you do sum, that's obviously the sum of that. If you do average, you get the average. Now this is the total row. So that means if I go here and open the square bracket and go to this totals, that will now refer to that totals, which is that row in the bottom. And finally, just like I said, the regular just table name refers to the actual range which is the same as using this data, which will just refer to the range in the middle. Now, the only thing from this list I didn't talk about yet is this first one, which is the add sign, which refers to the current row. So 
I'm going to hit escape to get out of this. And for now, I don't need the totals here either. So I'm going to remove the total row. As a matter of fact, you can also remove the head of rows if you don't want to look at them. But remember, even though you remove the head of rows to not display them, in your table syntax, I can still access those column names. They're basically just invisible. I'm going to put the column names back. So now, let's talk about that at symbol. Let me add a couple of columns here. So now sometimes you go here and you add another column. So we're going to say difference. And in this cell, I would like to just say this minus this, 50 minus 3. So the way you can do that here, you can just open a square bracket. And I don't have to do the table name now because I'm in the table already. The at sign means the current row. And I'm going to say, let's take the amount column in the current row. So if I just did amount without this at sign, that just means this whole column from that table. But if I do the at sign, that means this current row from that column. I can say that minus, and then again, I'm going to do the at sign and do the net. And now, as soon as I hit enter, see how it drags the formula down so it copies it for the entire table. Now, once that happens, this thing is going to pop up. And you can do undo calculated column because by default, this is a calculated column that's going to just drag the formula down to the bottom, right? You may or may not like that. So I'm going to put it back. I'm going to redo calculated column to make it happen. But if you don't want it to happen, you can open this and change that to undo calculated column. So it doesn't do that auto drag down feature. Now, what's nice about that is that if you're in the middle of the table and you decide the formula should change, this one should be plus, not minus. As soon as I hit enter, it changes the whole column like this. Now, this could be a great thing or not a great thing, depending on what you're trying to do. Now, this syntax is going to show up, by the way, automatically. So if I just clear this and go back here and do equal sign and click on this, see, minus this, Excel does it for me. So now, because it knows this is a table, it's no longer using A2, B2 syntax. You can, however, do that still. So I can do A2 minus B2. And if I enter, you'll see the same thing happens. So it's still going to drag the formula down. We're using the regular syntax in Excel instead of using table syntax. So I'm going to change it back to our regular table syntax, this minus this. That's fine. Now it's updated, as you can see, for all of them. So why is this a good thing? So one reason is that we can refer to a range like this and it can auto update, right? That's kind of the whole point of this. So one way sometimes people fix this is by doing this. They simply go here and do the sum and they select this whole column and close parentheses. And that way you don't have to do a table because it's still going to grab the whole column, sum it up, assuming you don't have any other numbers here, right? And you can also do the average the same way and select the whole column. But there are going to be some things that you might not be able to do. So for example, if you wanted to count what's in a column, and if I do counter function using, let's just do counter, not the counter. So let's just go ahead and select this. See, when I select it automatically applies this table column structure, I'm going to hit enter and that's going to give me the count. So it gives me seven. Now, if I do that same thing, for the whole column, like this, I'm getting an eight because now headers are getting on away because header is one of the things it's counting. So now with this table structure, we can get our table kind of zoomed into what it is. And then even if you have more columns on top or below, and maybe you have some other things going on here, it's still going to be fine because now this is just calculating this table, and this is just doing the whole column. And what's also good about this is when you have more complicated formulas, when you select the whole column, you're forcing Excel to do this calculation for the entire column. And basically in this case, it has to go through the entire used range to be able to do the calculation, which will slow it down. 
And this formula is more specific. It knows the range. So it's just going to do the calculation for that range without having to do those extra calculations. Now that also brings me to how do you remove a table? So if somebody made a table and usually people don't change that to not show the formatting, it's some sort of formatting. And by default, it's this something like that or the blue one. I don't know which one is it. This one probably. Now, sometimes you don't want this feature anymore. You don't want this to be a table as a table. You want it to become a regular range. So the way to remove this, you probably first want to remove the formatting unless you want to keep the formatting. If you want to keep the formatting, you can skip this step. But if you want to get rid of it, you open this, go to light and right in that same table design or design. So right in here, you're going to see this convert to range. And that's pretty much means get rid of the table. So if I click yes right now, it's no longer going to be a table, which means right now, if I go here and add another 300 and look at my totals, see this no longer updates. Well, this one is still going to give you this total because we just summed up the whole column, right? But this one doesn't update anymore because it's no longer a table. So one thing that happens sometimes that people accidentally start using tables is because tables are also available on their home tab. So sometimes just for design purposes, somebody will select whatever range they have and go here, format as table. And they click on one of this, they press okay. And as soon as you did this, you just converted this thing to a table again. So you see there's table design, there's the name of the table. So all of a sudden I converted it to a table and this happens a lot where people do it without realizing what's actually happening. So it's not about the design. It's about the functionality. And I'm going to do a separate video with tables with more complicated formulas and how you handle those situations in a table. But for this one, that should do it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.